So hi all, this is the seventh episode of Angular 20 tutorial. So in this particular episode, we are going to discuss directives. What are the directives, different types of directives you already know. Some of this custom directive, you can create your own directives also, right? So everything we are going to discuss. So this is the seventh episode till now, the basic project creation, what are component, project file structure, uh, life cycle we are remaining, data binding, signal and control flow statement and the routing is done. Now we are seeing the directive. So a major feature or major deprecation was there in angular 20 so previously in directive we have majorly two types attribute directive and the structural directive in structural directive previously we had star ng if and star ng for now this two directive ng if directive was used to hide and show or add or remove element ng for directive to create new element just like a for loop we have seen in control flow statement but now both of these directives are deprecated we cannot use this in Angular 20. So that's why it's it's not part of the topic. But possibility is that if you are working, you might, uh, all the projects are not with Angular 20, correct? So we have to understand the working behavior of NGF and ng for also. So in this video description, I will be providing the link of the older video where I have explained the NGF and ng for because this is only focused to Angular 20 and in Angular 20, we don't have NGF and ng for So that's why here I'm not covering that but I will be providing the link of it. You can just go through it because obviously you need, you should know the ng and ng for also, just like how you know in at the rate if and at the rate for, just like that ng and ng for was also there. Now, coming back to directives. So in directives, we have two types of directive, attribute directive, structural directive. Now we don't have by default, some pre, uh, default directives and at structural directive, but you can create your own directives also, okay? Component is also kind of a directive, but it has a HTML page. Remaining directive doesn't have a template. Component is not kind of a directive where we have some template associated with it. Fine. Now, attribute directive. Again, a definition will be what are directive. So directive is a something which add extra behavior to your HTML element. Directives add extra behavior to your HTML element. That is the definition of directive. But once you see all the directive, like Till now we have seen also in routing we have seen this router link or router outlet these are nothing but directive so with router link you are able it is by adding this router link it is converting that into href only so it is adding something extra behavior to your html tag okay router outlet this is also a directive which helps you to render the activated component getting it so every directive has some purpose okay so that is the definition of directive now we are going to see the attribute directive we just create a component quickly. See, we have implemented the routing, right? So now, whenever you just create directive first, component first. Now, whenever you create the component, next thing will be you will create the route and your navbar, you will add the route. So we created the component. You have to go to your app route.ts. You will create one more route. Then here again path, here I will say a tree root directive and the component which we want to open. So component attribute directive, fine. So we have created our route. Now we created the route. So we have the nav bar in our app con component. So let's copy this li tag, put it over here. Let's get the route name. This is the route name we have. It will go over here and the text. Fine, let's make it directly only. Let's say when check if we are able to render the page. If I click on directive, see attribute directive is getting rendered. So we are able to navigate. Now, in attribute directive, we have two types of directive, ng class and ng style. ng model is there, but that we have already seen. That's, uh, that's how you, uh, this is the directive which lets you to sync your variable and the input element. Fine. So ng class and ng style we are going to use. So ng class is a directive which helps you to add dynamic class to an element. ng class. This directive will help you to add dynamic class to an element. Just like that, ng style will help you to add dynamic CSS. This is by using ng class, you add a class. By using ng style, you add a dynamic CSS. Fine. So let's see the implementation now. Let's close it. Mm, attribute directive. Again, one more 
the request just if you are new please do like and subscribe so that you will get the notification also let's open this now now i am going to create a simple page let's say row grid structure we will create for all three after this uh, now here we will have a button let's add btn to btn success here we will say add green just like this one more button i will add here i will say danger and red and inside this call three again let's have one more div and we will add a class let's say p3 and i will say div1 let me just create the ui because if the ui is proper then only you will be able to understand the topic now see we have this div1 and we have two buttons. Let's see if I click on the green, this div1 should have the green color. If I click on red, it should have the red color. So now in bootstrap, we have already the classes bg success and bg danger that will add background color, correct? So now on click of grid, I need to add a bg success color to this and on click of this, I need to add bg danger class to this div. So how we do it? So for that, I will create a variable. Now, as in uh, from signal, I have explained, right? From now ahead, you should start using signal everywhere possible. So instead of creating a normal variable, sometimes I will use the signal also. You So again, we are repeating the same thing. So it will be able to help you, right? So, and various scenarios also where you can use the signal that will also get clear. Let's say I just need to store the class name because we have two buttons, right? So on click, on click of respective button, we need a state where we are going to store the class name. So let's say div1, bg, or class name simple is equal to we are going to create a signal. Data type, obviously string type of data, it's a class name. And by default, I'm keeping it as empty. So we created a signal. Now we have two buttons. So let's write a click event, set bg class. I'm going to, I'm not going to create two function. I'm going to create one function, but while passing the parameter in case of green, I will pass BG hyphen success, the bootstrap class. In case of red, I will pass BG hyphen danger. So see on respect to two button, I'm calling the function, but with the parameter. So when we create this function, we should accept the parameter class name, data type string type of data we are going to get fine. Now, whatever the value you get it over here in the parameter that you want to set it to your signal. So how do you say that? How do you update the signal value? So div dot class name dot set method. And what you will pass? The parameter name, whatever the parameter value you get. So we created signal on respective button. We call to function and while calling function, I'm passing some value. So that way I will get it over here and that I'm setting to the signal. Now, let's just print it also over here. How do you access a signal as a method? So see, again, by using signal, I'm again repeating the same topic. So you also do the same thing. So that's how you get hands on on the signal, fine? Let's say, if I click, by default, you can see we don't have anything over here. If I click on green, see, BG success. If I click on red, BG danger. So on click of it, respective signal value is getting changed. Now. We have a signal where we are going to get the class name. Now this class name, we need to add to this div, p31. So what we can do, square bracket ng class, but it's not coming. So now here's the thing. Our components are standalone. Whatever you want to use, it should be imported there, right? So now here we have to import ng class like this. Then see error gone away is equal to your variable sorry, your signal value as a method. So see now, if I show you inspect, by default, we will just have one class that is P3. We don't have any more class. Just pay attention to this P3. If I click on green, see BG success class got added and you are able to see the BG color also. If I click on red, my class is getting changed. Clear? So this is how you add a dynamic class to you your LE element. This is ng class. So by using ng class, you add dynamic classes to your HTML elements. Got it? In case of this, your class name is coming from your variable. Again, it can be condition wise also. Okay. 
So instead of having this directly value, you can compare it also. Let's say you have some true false value. If it is true, you will have this class, otherwise this class, ternary operator, right? So again, there are multiple scenarios also. So those scenarios I will be discussing in the project. We will create a small project there. I will discuss all the scenarios, but here I'm just keeping it to basic, right? So this div is having a dynamic class, which is going to get from our signal value. Got it? So I hope it is clear. So this is the use of ng class. By using ng class, we add dynamic classes to any element. Okay. Now, why dynamic I'm saying? This is constant, static, right? But this signal value can change, right? On click of button, the signal value is getting changed. So this is dynamic. Fine. Now, so this is your ng class. Just like that, we have ng style. Let's create one more column. Call three. Now here I'm going to do the, again, let's copy. Here we will say one more function. Now instead of signal, I will create a normal or Boolean value. Here I will show the ternary operator also. Let's say we have P3 and U2. And here let's say same thing we will do. What we did in the earlier example, we added a class, but now here we have to add a dynamic CSS. So style we need to add instead of adding a class, we need to add a dynamic CSS. So let's create a variable and based on that condition, instead of having the two button, now I will have the one button. So I will say toggle PG color. Fine. So we will create a variable. Normal variable I'm creating is div to green. Colon boolean is equal to by default, let's say false. Fine. So what I have created, I have created a normal variable, which is having boolean value. If this variable is true, I need to add a dynamic. I need to add a, let's say yellow color or something. So we need to use ng style. So ng style, first we need to import ng style. How do you write ng style? So on this element, we need to add it. So again, square bracket ng style. Ng style needs, let's see if it shows or not. So it needs object kind of data, key value pair data. Key is nothing but your CSS key and the value, right? So here, curly bracket. Now your CSS property will be background color. So inside the single quote background, hyphen color, colon. Now here we need to provide the value. So if this variable is true, equal to equal to true, I'm using the ternary operator, then this value, otherwise this value. So see, we can have, we can create a normal class variable also and string value and there we can store the class color also and that we can directly provide. But let's say I want to make it one more interesting. If this variable is true, I will add, uh, let's say blue color or red color. So see, I'm adding a dynamic color, background color to this div. But based on the condition, if this variable is true, I'm adding blue color to the background color or red. And we need a function to change this. Let's say toggle due to color. And in this very in this function, we will just toggle this variable value. And this function we will call it over here. This will be without the parameter because we have a Boolean value. So we can do it the vice versa. So this dot is due to green is equal to not. So this will do the vice versa toggle kind of thing. Let's see it happening. See, we have created a Boolean variable. If the Boolean variable is true, we will add blue color to this background CSS, otherwise red. And we have created a function inside that function. We have just written the toggle functionality means if this variable value we are changing, if it is true, not of true, false, not of false, true like that. And we call this function over here. Let's check it. So by default, our variable is, I think, false. So if it is false, it is going to the red block. Okay. If I change the variable, if I clicked on this, see, changing. Let us me show you this also. So by default, you can see it's a CSS, right? So here you can see blue value is there. If I click on this, see, a red value. Understood? 
So this is your, this is what we added a dynamic background color by using class name. We added a dynamic class, but here we added a dynamic CSS color value we are changing. So in ng style, you need to pass object. Now this object, you will, you can get it from a variable also or here you can declare and you can pass the value. Okay. So again, I'm saying like, this is just a basic, again, there are so many scenarios, but for that, I need a proper project. We need a scenario so there I can explain properly and you will be also able to understand everything properly. So this is your directive and inside the directive, this is just the attribute directive. Okay. Now we can create our custom directives also. This is predefined directive, default directive, what Angular has provided. Just like that, you can create your custom directives also. Okay. So that we are going to see, like we have to create custom pipe, custom directive. So again, with the host listener, ng, element rep, renderer, so many things are there. So that we will see in the advanced part. But for now, considering you are a beginner, this is sufficient for you. Okay. Again, there are many scenarios. Uh, in the first episode, I think I have explained, like I have so many tasks, like because this is the basic. If you master the basic, then remaining things are one or two times you are going to use. But this is every day. In development, you are going to use this concept. So if you need the task, you can ping me. I will provide you the task also. For every task, for every topic, now I have so many tasks created. Whatever the project scenarios I have worked on or my friends have worked on, we have combined that into an application. And there you can see for every topic, you get so many different, different scenarios. For adding dynamic class also, there are so many tons of various scenarios which we normally use in while working in the project. Fine. So you can connect me on WhatsApp. Again, if you are new, please do like and subscribe my video channel. Okay, that's it. Thank you, guys.